Today we are going to learn to see the forest with different eyes, with a new perspective applying the physiognomic formula. What is the physiognomic formula? In analog forestry, we have a very valuable tool to quickly and easily describe the vegetation of the forest, or any place where you want to establish an analog forestry plot, or in other words, a forest garden or analog forest. The formula can be applied in any area with different vegetation cover, such as pasture, production area, secondary forest, or climax forest. Imagine the horizontal structure of a tropical forest. It has a unique vegetation structure consisting of several vertical layers. There are large trees that form an emerging canopy or stratum, followed by smaller trees and palms that form the arboreal canopy. There is an understory of herbaceous plant layer, the herbaceous plant stratum, and the soil stratum with ferns, for example. In addition, there are epiphytes, vines, and lianas that grow on trees. In the physiognomic formula, we use three symbols. A capital letter to describe the growth form, a number to set the height range, a lowercase letter to describe the degree of vegetation cover. To determine the growth form, we use the table of the physiognomic formula where we find basic forms of growth, trees and shrubs. For evergreen trees with simple or compound leaves, we use the symbol V. An example is the mango. For deciduous trees, which are those that lose their leaves at certain times of the year, the symbol D is used. An example is the seba or kapok tree. These are followed by categories of needles and of fillies. We also have other forms of growth. For palms, we use the symbol P. An example is the coconut palm. For epiphytes, we use the symbol X. An example is an epiphyte known as Swiss cheese plant, Monstera deliciosa. The other categories that we need to determine are rhizomatous plants, such as ginger, plantain, and banana. There is another category for bamboos, another for vines and creepers, liana and also annual herbaceous plants such as melon, perennial herbaceous plants such as oregano, and grasses such as barley. To subjectively describe the structure of the canopies or the height of the vegetation, we use numbers ranging from one to nine. Nine is for the highest strata and one for the lowest. To determine the percentage of coverage or abundance, we use lowercase letters. For continuous coverage of more than 75% coverage, we use C. Interrupted from 51 to 75%, the I. In patches 26 to 50%, P. Rare or scarce 6 to 25%, R. Sporadic 1 to 5%, B. Almost absent, less than 1%, and A. Now what do we do with this formula? If we could observe the area from an aerial image or from a drone, we would identify how certain species of vegetation are distributed in space. For example, a D7I represents deciduous trees, which are 20 to 35 meters high, with interrupted coverage between 51 to 75 percent of the area. Another example is a V6P that represents evergreen trees. 10 to 20 meters high in patches of 26 to 50 percent coverage. Now we are going to apply the physiognomic formula in a mature forest using the formula page in the IAFN field guide or laminated sheet if available. The first step is to identify an evaluation area as seen by the human eye at 360 degrees. The next step is to define the number of levels or strata of vegetation. We can observe, for example, the herbaceous stratum, the understory, the arboreal stratum, and the emergent stratum. We are going to repeat the operation with the other levels of vegetation, including herbaceous plants, vines, palms, epiphytes, etc. Thus, we record the F1 formula of the mature forest. Once this step is completed, now we are going to apply the formula also in the plot that we want to intervene or design with the analog forestry methodology to determine the existing vegetation in the plot. For this, we must move to the plot or land that we want to enrich. This formula is called F2. 
The third step is to do a gap or deferential analysis to compare the formula for the mature forest F1 with the formula for the analog forestry plot F2. This helps us see what is missing in the plot to be intervened. The categories present in F1, but not in F2, pass directly to the gap formula, for example, V7C. If the formula is equally present in both formulas, it is not included in the gap, for example, V5P. If there is a canopy layer of the same type in the mature forest and on the plot, we use an arrow to indicate the difference in coverage between the two layers. Say, V3A arrow P. We continue with the other vegetation levels, including herbaceous plants, vines, palms, and epiphytes, separating them with a semicolon. Thus, we calculate the gap, or structural difference, between the mature forest and the plot to be intervened. In this way, you are oriented in the selection of plant species to be introduced into the farm to close the gap and progressively try to imitate the structure and main ecological functions of the mature forest. An important tip is to recalculate the difference periodically every three to five years to monitor the evolution of your analog forest.